the, the big theme is submission. <laughs> and I know it's such a loaded word. It's like, come on. It almost feels to me like we should, you know, 10 years before or in the last decade, I guess I could say, submission has become such a, almost a political word in church. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's really become so loaded with so much opinion and theology even and um, but in this season, I have just been so aware of the privilege of having made peace with the concept and the practical application of submission. Because you see, if we practically become friends with the value, with the principles behind submission, there is a, a big chunk of peace, which is a reward to all of us, and especially in a season like this one, the one we're facing right now. And so I'm gonna pray over us as we start this session. Um, and, and my prayer is really gonna be one um, that I'm trusting God to woo our hearts back to him so that submission will not cause us to have hair raising kind of rebellious thoughts, but that will actually say, okay, Lord, maybe there's something new about this that you'd like to show me. Maybe something that I haven't thought about before. And that's really my heart for us today, that, that we'll discover something about submission, about the principle and the blessing that is held within it, um, within this time that we're going to spend together. Okay, everyone ready? Let's pray. Lord, I, I pray this morning for a canopy over our thoughts almost, for this, just this hour that we've set out to be with you for the time that we've set out to delve deeper into the truths of your word. Lord, we, we get clever with scripture, we get clever with philosophy, we get clever with the substance of things that we read, and they're all amazing. But God, nothing compares to your goodness, and nothing compares to your plans and your purposes for our good. And so I pray, Lord, that right now love will come, and it says love comes and it literally just displaces every lie of the enemy. That's why love is so powerful. And so, Lord God, you say in your word, perfect love casts out all fear. And so we invite your perfect love into every heart, every mind, every soul. And we say, Lord God, may we be pliable. May we be movable as you work with us with your word. And may we be found those that are ready to be in submission to your mission. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. So let me just get my notes situated on the correct side of the screen. I'm getting really good at all this. Maybe not as good as Yuri. Um, but one of these days, I'll be able to do what he does when he, um, he has like a PowerPoint on the one side and a lower third on the bottom and a, we'll get there goals. We're gonna, we're gonna get there. So I'm really excited to share this with you today. And so one of the biggest things that I found um, in the whole idea of, of submission and, and this is, is the concept of really dealing with the word understanding. Have you ever connected submission and understanding? Two very big words, two words that I think we uh, oftentimes uh, aim for to attain, like we wish we could, we, we want to, but we're, we're not exactly sure we have what it takes, you know, those kinds of things. And so for me, looking at this today again, I just, I remember one of the most, um, I was going to say awakening moments to connecting the concept of submission and understanding was T.D. Jakes, Bishop T.D. Jakes. And he spoke about this when, I, well, it must have been when I was just like in my 20s. Um, Yuri and I got married when I was 19 and he was 20 and in South Africa, you have got to be 21 to get married and legally sign your marriage certificate, right? And so we couldn't sign and our parents had to come and sign on our behalf, kind of giving permission that we could be married. So from a very young age, I had to deal with what does submission mean? Um, and I wanted to set a good example of that, especially, you know, being in ministry already by that time. 
And so Pastor Bishop T.D. Jakes preached about this in that season already. And I've held this concept so close to my heart for all these years. And it's, it's proven to, to stand the test of time. He says, understanding. In talking about the concept of understanding, it is standing under the governance of one that is greater. Standing under and living from what you have come to know realize and conceive about and then you can fill in whatever goes after that so standing under uh, implies choice so submission always has to do with a choice um, as soon as there is no choice involved it changes from submission to subordination and we're not encouraged in the scriptures to be puppets that are literally manipulated or controlled. We're encouraged in the scriptures to choose, to willfully come under and to actually invite and embrace that which we have come to know, that which we have realized and that which we have conceived. In other words, seen, perceived, internalized and has become your own. There's a whole lot of process, and I find that a privilege. As we get to know one another better, and especially in this season, where um, building friendships and making sure that there's growth in those relationships and friendships have become somewhat challenging. We have to think anew about where am I gonna get uh, the access to my friends that I used to have gotten just over organizing a quick coffee, or maybe a lunch date. All of a sudden, we have to take initiative and think fresh and creatively about making sure that we invest in the areas that makes us strong. And so all the more, for me, thinking about understanding, literally standing under, and submission, choosing to place the priority of my mission in a secondary place, sub, the mission of that, the one that I've chosen to be above me. So submission, choosing to come under the mission of one that is greater and understanding, saying, what is it that I've come to know, realize and conceive of the one that I'm choosing to stand under? Isn't that a liberating and almost a freeing concept to think, wow, someone else is going to take the blame for the mistakes I make. Someone else is gonna take the rap for the things that I act like I didn't understand, but maybe the person that I do submit under knows exactly what I understand and don't understand and yet yields grace and mercy to me way more than what I deserve. And all of a sudden, this concept, this idea is no longer just something that we appropriately or apportionately give or yield to only a select few, but we literally become submissive as we understand more about the people we're surrounded with. We become skillful at being submissive. How can I support your mission? How can I support where you're on your way to? And all of a sudden, the whole idea of submission is no longer a negotiation of rebellion versus subordination or control. Oh no, it actually has absolutely nothing to do with that. And I pray that maybe in this season, we'll be able to delve deeper into concepts like this one. Things that we maybe haven't had the privilege of really unpacking and, and taking time to unpack that over this season. And so again, I have a little song that I'd like to mention to you. And, and please remind me when I forget um, on the WhatsApp group, if you're a part of our WhatsApp group, or if you'd like to get the info, just contact us. But there's a song by Hillsong that has really not made it onto the circuit in a big way. So it's really not one of those well-known anthems that the whole world is singing. But this song is called Captain. Did I mention it last week? No? Good. The song is called Captain. And so the lyrics of this song says, Jesus, my captain, my soul's trusted Lord, all my allegiance is rightfully yours. And if from this course you intend I depart, speak to the sails of my wandering heart. Isn't that incredible lyrics? Speak to the sails of my wandering heart. Now, 
I am not going to throw Casey under the bus blatantly, but I do know for a fact that seeing as she is my best friend, we speak about the wandering trails that our hearts can take often. It's almost one of the, the, the biggest themes of our conversations is we'll literally ask each other, how's your heart? That's true. <laughs> and it's something that I hope I can encourage all of you, find a friend, the friends that you do have, take that relationship to a whole nother level. And especially in this season of isolation, one of the enemy's biggest um, uh, um, strategies to get us is to isolate us. And you know what? This, this time that we're in right now, isolation is real. None of us can say, I'm not facing any challenges of isolation. None of us are exempt from that. But wouldn't it be amazing if we could be the generation that really kicks the devil's butt when it comes to this whole strategy that he has, that if he can isolate us, he can get us. And we can find wisdom. We can find the truth that God has already given to us, the ways of wisdom that he's already sown into our lives. And we can become those that literally create, I almost want to say something like an exercise program, like a recipe almost, saying, hey, this is how you deal with isolation. These are the scriptures. These are the meditations. This is how you keep your heart from wandering, from maybe losing the trail, losing the direction. And so when we think about captain and we think about the wandering heart and, and, and we hear that lyric that says, my soul's trusted Lord, captain, my soul's trusted Lord, speak to the sails of my wandering heart. And so that's really the core of what I want to share with us today and what I want to delve deeper into is as we see him as the captain, as we see him as the coach maybe in our lives, as we see him as the one that gives us the rhythm of life that would be life giving to us, that would be sustainable to us. These are the different areas that I think all of us need help in right now. I need some direction every day. Lord, what is it that I need to navigate? What is it in this that I'm facing today in my meetings, in my relational engagement, in my marriage, in my self-talk? Lord, come and give me, point me in the direction that you would have me meditate. Point me in the direction that you would have me speak. Point me in the direction that you would have me invest my, into my mind, into my heart. What is it that we should be reading in this time? What is it that we should be watching in this time? Jesus, my captain, my coach. And then the word pacemaker or pacekeeper, I'll speak about that a little bit later um, in this journey that we're going on together in the next few minutes. But pacemaker or pacekeeper has, has really become something for me in thinking about long distance you know, running. Um, and, and even just in athletics, thinking about like as soon as you do something a little bit further than 400 meters or you know, I don't know how far that is in, in whatever metrics you guys use, but as soon as you need to go around that track more than once, a pacemaker or a pacekeeper becomes a part of your training program. And I believe in this season, we're in for the long haul. We are. This morning, we were part of a global call of, of city changing um, young catalyst leaders all over the world that we call the next move. And one of the most prevalent things that was spoken about there, and um, Abby was on that call as well, so she'll be able to testify that I'm not lying to you. But one of the things that the guy spoke about is none of us really know how long this is going to take. And what's tough about that is we're, the fear of the unknown is front and center for us. Now, for me, thinking about a long distance run, something that I've never been very comfortable with. Like say the word marathon and I respond like Mufasa and you know, the hyenas, when the hyenas would say Mufasa and they'd go, ooh. I kind of just get a little uneasy and a little chill about mm, a marathon. I've never really identified with that. But I know that there are people that are good with that and I know that they enjoy it. And so I'm ready to lean in to what it is that they've learned, to learn from them and what we're experiencing right now. This is a long distance run. 
It's a long distance race that we're a part of right now. And so bringing together all these concepts, thinking about he is our pacemaker, he is our pace keeper. When we're running this race that we don't know how long it's gonna be, you're gonna need someone that knows what the pace needs to be right now. Someone that is actually way beyond your knowledge of this, that knows how far you still have to go. You see, you can't just calculate how long this race is by the knowledge none of us can calculate how long this race is. But he knows. And so as the Holy Spirit paces us, may we become so good at staying and keeping in step with when to rest and when to run, when to press in and when to just maybe lie down and rest in the green pastures that he has for us. The Holy Spirit's there for us to guide us in this time. And so I went on a little voyage through the scriptures um, to find some scriptures that will just enlighten our minds to what this theme really, um, I'm, I'm wanting to say, the theme kind of wraps around this concept of understanding and at the same time making sure that we keep in step as our hearts sometimes wander, sometimes go a little astray. Listen to the encouraging scriptures and you guys are welcome to take notes and Go read this in different translations as I encourage us almost every week. It's called Word Shop. We're working with the word, yes. And so especially for Abby that's with us for the first time today, I'm saying especially for you. But I love to use the message paraphrase in this time that we're together because I think not many of us would do that every day. Some of us do. But we all have an NIV or an Amplified or a New King James, or if you have U version or Bible Gateway apps, you can literally put these translations next to each other. And I pray and my heart for us as women of the word would be that we literally use the skillful scalpel of the word. It says the Lord uses his, his word like a skillful surgeon with a scalpel dividing between that which is of the soul and that which is of the spirit. And that's my heart for us when I read these scriptures in maybe translations or paraphrases that make us think about very well-known scriptures differently. So here we go. Psalm 73 verse 25 to 28 in the message. It says, you're all I want in heaven and you're all I want on earth. When my skin sags and my bones get brittle, God is rock firm and faithful. Look, those who have left you are falling apart. Deserters, they'll never be heard from again. But I'm in the very presence of God. Oh, how refreshing it is. I have made Lord God my home and I'm telling the world what you do. None of this has changed for us girls. None of this has changed. A lot has changed around us, but this truth, the fact that we have access to the presence of the Most High God has not changed. Second scripture. I really love this one. I think I've used it a lot in the last few weeks. So if I'm repeating, forgive me. Um, but hey, there's always, it's always good for us to repeat scriptures. So Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 12, it says, and that about wraps it up. God is strong and he wants you strong. So take everything the master has set out for you, well-made weapons of the best materials and put them to use so that you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. This is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. It's a marathon. This is for keeps. It's a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. Come on. This is, to me, this lives. I'm seeing the fingerprints of the enemy um, on people's lives with COVID-19. Yes, for sure, like front and center. But I'm also seeing the fingerprints of the enemy on people that are really struggling with anxiety and depression right now. It's about our hearts taking a walk somewhere that has not been intended to go. And I believe that the devil really does have some kind of grip on people in this season that are fragile, people that are fragile. And so this morning, I just once again sat before the Lord. And as I found this again, and I'm like, Lord, your agenda for us has not changed. 
You are strong. But it's not only for our God about displaying himself as strong in this season. He wants us strong. That's his agenda. That's his priority. His priority is for us to repent and get rid of whatever we need to get rid of in this season. And he's strong on that as well. But at the same time, he is strong and he wants us strong. He sees success for us in this season. He sees fruitfulness for us in the most unlikely places right now. And he sees the potential that you hold within you right now to be a generation that ushers in a different way of, of, of um, engaging with God and his word in this season. I'm making these huge quotes this morning and I pray and trust that whatever it is that he has for you, just find a place to lie down in your heart. So I'm not expecting any of you to keep up with all the major stuff I'm saying right now. Um, but I am really hoping that the Holy Spirit would drag these things down into your heart that's applicable for you and that it will grow and that it will bring it back to remembrance for you. And so the final um, psalm that I want to mention this morning, Psalm 34 verse 22 says, God pays for each slave's freedom. No one who runs to him loses out. Kind of the final verdict on this. No one who runs to God loses out. We hold this truth that in our desperation, when we call out, God gets us out of a tight spot. And so if you go and read the entire Psalm 34, especially in the message, you'll see he speaks about exactly that. He says, uh, I think it's about round about verse three that I remember. It says, God met me more than halfway and he freed me from my anxious fears. Come on. It says it in so many words. It says, um, blessed are you who run to him. Worship God if you want the best. Worship open doors to all his goodness. Um, and then later on, it, um, it, it ends off with this that I really love so much. It says, disciples so often get in trouble. Still, God is there for them every time. He's your bodyguard, shielding every bone in your body. Not even, even a finger gets broken. The wicked commit slow suicide. They waste their lives away, hating the good. But he brings hope to your heart and helps you catch your breath. He brings hope to your heart and lets you catch your breath. Um, and so I want to this morning tell you that he is on your side. He is in your corner. He is aware of you. He is leaning in to listen to even the smallest whispers and unctions in your heart. And the Psalm speaks about a desperate call at the same time. We read later on in the Psalms of David talking about the sigh. It says, I sigh in the presence of God and deep calls unto deep. And he responds with an accurate word to my sigh. So we find ourselves, and, and believe me, I've definitely been in that space in the last few days. Monday morning, to me, I woke up and I felt, wait a minute, this is ridiculous. Are we just going to repeat this now again? Are, are we just going to do that? Like, is this actually happening all over, like Groundhog Day kind of stuff, you know? And so I see those of you laughing with me. I hope you're laughing in empathy. I hope you are. Show me if you are. But I literally was a little bit like, wait a minute. The definition of insanity is when you keep on doing the same thing while expecting different results. And I'm going, hold, hold the phone. <laughs> I cannot be doing the same thing and expect the results to get better and better. So I need to be uh, vigilant and awake enough to not fall into the temptation of, oh, I have this routine now. I'm just going to copy it every week. We're going to lose our minds, girls. We have got to take initiative. We have got to be creative. We have got to keep on reaching. We have got to keep on inviting new voices and new influences into our lives and hear from different perspectives. And so stay awake. Keep yourself awake with what you're reading. Keep yourself awake with what you're listening to. 
Keep yourself awake and listen to me. This is really important. You have got to lighten the load. One of the most important things, or let me just illustrate this in a funny way. You're, you guys always like jokes. I know this. Here's the thing. Just imagine this for a second. Like imagine someone getting ready. Like you're standing at the beginning of these marathons, right? Now I've seen not many, but the ones that I have seen people run is you oftentimes start when it's still dark in the morning, right? Because you have the whole day ahead of you for running. So they oftentimes start when it's like very early morning, still dark in the morning, okay? Can you imagine someone standing there like at the beginning of this day's race with a backpack and, you know, maybe some extra makeup, maybe like, I don't know, a radio for some entertainment on the shoulder, or just ridiculously loaded luggage for this race, right? I've never seen that. If you want to run the race effectively, you've got to lighten the load. You have to run with as little as possible weight added onto you. And so I brought us this story that I'm going to read for us about lightening up. And so for a moment here, you might see me looking straight at you like this, but I'm not, I'm just reading a page on, my, on, on, on the screen, okay? A long distance race. You have got to lighten the load. So I'm going to read this story for you. It's from a book called Traveling Light by Max Licato. And I just remembered the story this morning. And so here's our story time for today. I hope everyone's ready. I can't see you right now. So I hope you're okay. <laughs> Do you have some luggage of your own? He writes. He says, Do you think God might use David, Psalm 23, to lighten your, your load? Traveling light means trusting God with the burdens that you were never intended to bear. Listen to this story. Have you ever considered the impact of excess baggage on relationships? A wedding is reenacted in which we hear the thoughts of a bride and a groom. The groom enters laden with luggage, a bag dangles from every appendage and each bag is labeled guilt, anger, arrogance, and insecurities. This fellow is loaded as he stands at the altar. The audience hears him thinking, finally, a woman who will help me carry all my burdens. See, she is so strong. She is so stable. So, and as his thoughts continue, hers begin. She enters wearing a wedding gown, but like her fiance, she is covered with luggage, pulling a hanging bag, shouldering a carry-on, hauling a makeup kit, a paper sack, everything you could imagine and everything very neatly labeled. She has her own bags of prejudice, loneliness, disappointment, and her expectations. Listen to what she's thinking. Just a few more minutes. I've got me a man. No more counselors, no more group sessions. So long discouragement and worry. I won't be seeing you anymore. He is going to fix me. <laughs> Finally, they stand at the altar, almost lost in a mountain of luggage. They smile their way through the ceremony, but when given the invitation to kiss each other, they can't. Because how do you embrace someone if your arms are full of bags? For the sake of those you love, learn to set these things down. And for the sake of the God you serve, do the same. He wants to use you, you know. But how can he if you're exhausted? This truth came home to me yesterday afternoon on a run. Preparing for a jog, I couldn't decide what to wear. The sun was out, but the wind was chilly. The sky was clear, but the forecast said rain. Jacket or sweatshirt? The Boy Scout within me prevailed. I wore both, a sweatshirt and a jacket. I grabbed my Walkman, old reference, old story, my earphones, but couldn't decide which music to play. A sermon? Maybe that would be better. You guessed it. So I just took both. Needing to stay in touch with my kids, I carry, carried my cell phone. 
no one would steal my car, so I pocketed my keys. As precaution against thirst, I brought along some drink money in a pouch. I looked more like a pack mule than a runner. With half a mile, I was peeling off the jacket and hiding it in a bush. <laughs> that kind of weight will slow you down. What's true jogging is true. What's true in jogging is true in faith. God has a great, great race for you to run and under his care, you will go where you've never been and serve in ways that you've never dreamed of. But you have to drop some stuff. How can you share grace? If you're full of guilt, how can you offer comfort if you are disheartened? And how can you lift someone else's load if you, your arms are full with your own? For the sake of those you love, travel light. For the sake of the God you serve, travel light. And for the sake of your own joy, travel light. <laughs> What are the things that you've labeled? What are the things that you've grown so accustomed to every day carrying with you? Things that you maybe find really, truly important. Um, things that you find maybe really, truly significant. Um, but in a season like this one, you know, like just really fi figuring out that it, it's, been, it's been useless for so long. Why would you carry it along any longer? I think we're... Um, we're in a time of privilege, actually, to discern the things that we used to find so important. And all of a sudden, we're in a, we're in a space where what used to be important isn't any longer. And so the only reason why we're keeping on carrying on to do certain things or keeping on carrying things is because we somehow think that everything will go back to the way it was before, not really giving a moment's thought to the one that has always been in charge of the way things are or will be. And so I am making peace with the fact that I've never been okay with long distance running. But in this season, maybe I need to gear up to rather live my life like a long distance runner would rather than someone who just gears up for a sprint runs as fast as you can for as long as you can. That's not going to be okay for what we're facing right now. And so I want to make this suggestion that there is potential for you to come out of this season a better version of you. Can you for a second just internalize that and think about what that means for us? You know, like really think about it for a second. Just internalize that right now. Imagine that when the doors of our lives are open again, that we walk out into the world, a better version of ourselves, a better version of the ones that God has called to, to sow life, to bring life into the city of Austin and even way beyond that. And so I have this uh, idea of high altitude training and so, you know, when you, for us in South Africa, it's very easy to experience the difference. Like we would go on holiday sports or athletic training, um, like retreats and, and, and focus times, like what would happen in the States around summer holiday, you'd go on a summer camp for training for a specific sport. Now for us, it didn't happen in summer holiday because we didn't have that, but we would have these short, like one week moments throughout the year for the kids in school that were in the top teams. And I remember going on these camps um, and, and these like, I don't know, fitness or whatever kind of training weeks. And oftentimes they would have us do that at a high altitude part of our country. Now, I was privileged to live in a pretty much dry and high altitude area. And so, we would, invite, we would get these kids from the ocean or that, you know, the lower lying areas to come train with us and they would suffer. It would be so hard for them to work with where we're at. But when we would go down to the ocean side for tournaments and we'd have to do our warm up runs in the morning, we would just go. Like you just feel like, oh, I have so much more breath. I'm more fit, I'm stronger. And that's literally because of the altitude difference. And so just like where we're at right now, we're isolated. 
and we're training on a higher altitude right now. God is setting us up that when we're done with this, we're going to run longer, we're going to run stronger. I see so much of the strategy of the Father that's working together a good future and a hope for us in this. And I pray that as these examples meet you today, that you will see the fruit that he is getting ready to bring forth in your life. And